Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the Annunciation of our Lord Jesus Christ, that very good news that changed the whole world. Of course, you remember that this is part of the plan of God. If you cast your mind back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, where we talk about the Proto-Evangelium, God already made this promise that He is going to redeem or save the whole world. Let us remember one thing that God has been working on this. It has been part of the plan of God. But today, through this annunciation, we see that God is a faithful God. His faithfulness endures forever. Through the time of the Old Testament, God in various ways reminded us that He has not abandoned us. He sent many prophets, many kings, and many messengers just to keep on preparing us for this day. If you count from this day until December 25, that is nine months. So Jesus was going to stay in the womb of our Blessed Mother Mary for nine good months, just like every other baby. But the beautiful thing about what we celebrate today is that this is the beginning, actual beginning of our salvation history. It has been in the plan of God, as I said, all this time, but today we really see the actual beginning of this plan of God. Of course, this reminds me personally that God is a process God. He is a God of step by step, the God of stages. Just imagine so many centuries ago when God made His promise. He reiterated His promise also in the first reading today. When God, looking upon King Ahaz, he saw how afraid he was. Remember that at this moment, the country where King Ahaz was ruling was surrounded by so many enemies. Just as we see in the case of Russia and Ukraine today, Russia became so, they felt so insecure because of the presence of NATO forces around their territory. So in the same way also, we also see how King Ahaz was a little bit scared. He was scared. It was a moment of hopelessness for him and he was looking for people who can help him. If you listen to all the presidential address given by uh, President Zelensky in this time, you will see him asking for support from the international community. In the same way you look at the context of this first reading, King Ahas was a little bit confused. He was afraid. He was hopeless in this moment. He was looking to have a certain alliance with the Assyrians. The implication of having an alliance with the Assyrians is that he will be subjected to worship the gods of the Assyrians. It was in this moment of hopelessness, in the moment of confusion, in the moment of fear, that God sent the prophet Isaiah to speak to King Ahaz and say, Do not be afraid. Do not worry. I will be with you. Ask me for any sign you want, and I will do it for you to show you that I am trustworthy. The only thing that God was asking from King Ahaz is to allow him to be the number one in his country, to be the number one in his heart. But King Ahaz said, no, I will not ask. And the prophet repeats something that we should bear in mind. Will you also weary my God? So when we refuse to trust in God, it makes God uncomfortable. So then the prophet goes on to make a promise, quoting God himself. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel means that God is with us. So if you are afraid of anything, always remember that God has promised his presence with us. In the gospel today, we also see the actual annunciation that the archangel Gabriel came to Mary in a town that was unknown, in a very little town of Nazareth. Of course, you know the quotations and the saying that say that, can anything good come from Nazareth? Yes. Mary was living in this little city. If God wants to use us, if God wants to allow us to become his instrument of anything good, he will locate us wherever we are because God knows our personal address. He knows our personal location. So God sent the archangel Gabriel to Nazareth, a little town. You see, God can raise you up even though you are nobody. God can raise you up, transform you, change you, and make you greater than even those that used to be greater than you. 
So when the angel came to Mary, look at the conversation between the archangel Gabriel and Mary. So when the archangel Gabriel greeted Mary, remember, he was just a messenger. It was God who was greeting Mary. Imagine divine greeting humanity. So, hell full of grace. That word in Greek, ke charitomene, was used only once in the whole Bible. Only once, in one occasion, and for one person, which is our Blessed Mother Mary. The Latin translated that as gratia plena, and the little reductionism translated it in English as full of grace. But Mary is the masterpiece of God's creation because God prepared Mary before time for this particular mission, the mission of being the Theotokos, the mother of God. Look at the conversation. Even though that Mary did not know Archangel Gabriel before, but she, in her humility, gave opportunity for him to converse with her. You see, when you have this relationship with God, you'll be able to accept everyone. Remember, angels were not just creatures with uh, wings. If you look at the, the encounter between Abraham and the three men who were walking in the hot afternoon, you understand that angels were not necessarily creatures with wings, as we see in the pictures. But Gabriel may have been a stranger to Mary, but Mary had that openness to welcome him. And they enter that discussion. You can imagine when Archangel Gabriel was saying all those things to Mary, a little girl, a young girl. And Mary was pondering all these things in her heart. There are so many things that happen in our life that we must have this kind of silent moment, just like Mary, to think about it and to present it to God. Pondering is also an act of prayer. It's an act of communication that Mary entered into communication with God because of her open-mindedness, she was able to you know, communicate with God to ask, what is this thing happening? And the archangel Gabriel said, do not be afraid. So whatever happens in your life, as far as God is in the middle of your life, do not be afraid because God will take care of you. He will never abandon you. This was what happened to King Ahaz. He was afraid, but God kept on making the promise, trust in me. Trust in me, I will not abandon you. And to convince you that I will never abandon you, I will send you Emmanuel. My dear brothers and sisters, Mary was pondering over these things and the archangel Gabriel said, do not be afraid. For God, everything is possible. And Mary said, how can this be? You know, I have no relations. I have no conjugal relationship with my husband yet because she is a virgin. And the archangel Gabriel said, don't worry, again, because the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. We remember that the Holy Spirit is the giver of life. Cast your mind back to the book of Genesis in the creation time. In that pneumatological kenosis, when the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters and there was calm, there was peace. The child of God that will be born will be the prince of peace. So for God, everything is possible. And the archangel Gabriel reminded Mary of a woman whom everyone considered to be barren. He said that to Mary, basically, to remind Mary that God can do all things. Whatever God wants to do, he can do it. Because everything in this world, the whole world belongs to God. And he has the key to open anywhere he wants to open. What was the response of Mary? Mary was among the Jews and among the people of God who have been praying and waiting for the Messiah. And here comes the opportunity for her to say yes or to say no. But she chose to say yes. She said, let it be. Let it be. Let it be according to your word. I am the handmaid of the Lord. A handmaid is a servant. Mary assumed a state of humility. Because without humility, it may be difficult for us to say yes. And Mary said yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I am just your instrument. Do with me whatever you will. If you look at what we are reading today about this uh, solemnity of Annunciation, the reality of obedience comes out so much in it. If you look at the second reading today also from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10, we understand also that Jesus is described as the obedient Son of God. Are you ready to remove your own human will and allow divine will 
to be in control of you? If you really want to conceive Jesus in your heart, because today we are talking about the incarnation, if you want to conceive Jesus in your heart every day, that you'll be controlled through the presence of Jesus, then you have to accept it humbly. Humility is very important for obedience. Obedience means that I dethrone my human will and I enthrone the will of God. It's no longer me. You know, controlling myself. Rather, it is the will of God controlling me. How do we find the will of God? The will of God begins from the Ten Commandments. The will of God is summarized in the love of God and the love of Neville. The will of God is personified in Jesus Christ. So if you want to do the will of God, do whatever Jesus tells you. That's what we see in John chapter 2, verse 5. Where our Blessed Mother Mary said, do whatever he tells you. So my dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate on this day when our salvation history actually started, let us ask the Lord for the openness, for the humility, and for the courage to say yes to him. Let us begin from this day to say yes to the will of God, yes to love, yes to kindness, yes to generosity, yes to forgiveness. Let us say no to hatred. No to bitterness, no to unforgiveness, no to wickedness. Everything that is ungodly, let us say no to it. Let us always say yes to God. And by that, we will also conceive Jesus in our hearts every day. Let me ask you, how many times have you celebrated your conception? Do you know the day you were conceived? Usually we celebrate our birthdays, our nativity. But how many of us know our conception? Without the conception, there will be no nativity. But remember that God is a process God. And we should learn from our Blessed Mother Mary who accepted the will of God. Let us also accept the will of God in our lives. Not your own will, not my own will, pero the will of God. Let us also learn to accept the children that God sends to us. It is also part of accepting the will of God. There's no child that is a mistake. So let us stop this issue of abortion. Let us stop it because it is an insult. Apart from being a grave mortal sin, it's an insult to the will of God. Every child is a gift from God. And we must learn to accept, to appreciate every child, irrespective of the circumstance that brought the child to us. Who do you trust in? Let us put God first in our lives. That's what obedience means. Let us submit ourselves to God. Let us surrender ourselves to God so that He will be the number one in our lives, in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions, and in our everyday. May God be the first. Amen. God bless you.